So good afternoon, everybody from National Handwriting Academy. This is uh, handwriting Malikarjun in front of you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today we have a very, very eminent personality amongst us to discuss about a very, very unique topic. I think we can count computers, those who can talk on this particular subject. That's such a such a wonderful topic we have come out with, and uh, this is the Write Talks by National Handwriting Academy by Handwriting Malikarjun, and we have a very very eminent guest with us, uh, Mr. Sudhir Kalyanikar from Mumbai, who is a very very active member of uh, Fountain Pen Association of India, a very very wonderful uh, organization institution which is working for the cause of promoting fountain pens. And to solve all the issues of I'm audible to everybody. all of you. I am not a man. Except me and the guest. So after a while, I am going to bring you a guest to you. Yes, in front of all of you. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to all of you. People are joining us. And this is going on FB also live. This is going on Facebook live also at the same time. And other people are joining us. Uh, I'm very, very happy. Sudhir sir is already there. After introduction, I'll request uh, uh, Sudhir Kalyanikar sir to keep the video on. Before that, people are joining us. I'm so happy. This is handwriting Malikarjan in front of you on behalf of Write Talks of National Handwriting Academy. I'm sitting in Hyderabad right now, and uh, Sudhir Kalyanikar sir is uh, sitting in Mumbai right now, and people are joining from various places of the country and abroad. Thank you so much for all of you for joining us this wonderful afternoon, this bright afternoon. I wish you a very, very shiny, bright, happy afternoon to all of you from Write Talks of National Handwriting Academy. We have started Write Talks in the month of August, and this is just a second talk live we're going on. We have done a, a very wonderful show with the Casey Janardhan sir, you know, who, is a, who is one of the very rarest uh, penmen pen men available in India. So we had a very wonderful show on 20th of August. And we are so lucky, we are very fortunate to have Sudhir Kalyanikar sir with us to talk to us about uh, fountain pens, inks, and nits. Very few people must be having an idea on all these topics. And we are so fortunate to have you, sir. Let me introduce uh, Sudhir Kalyanikar, sir, to all of you for your uh, knowledge. So Sudhir Kalyanikar, sir, is an IT professional. In the beginning, he has got a day job of the IT professional. And he's a visiting professor of marketing uh, for MBA people. He is a visiting professor and he is a kingmaker, I can say, because he is a very active member of Fountain Pen Association of India, uh, Mumbai. They make a lot of uh, designs. They advise many pen makers to design wonderful pens also. I have seen it personally. I, have, uh, I keep interacting with the members of uh, Fountain Pen Association of India, Sudhir Sir and Pradeep Sir, all these people. And uh, for your information, we are so fortunate to have him here. Mr. Sudhir Kalyanikar, sir, is a 30-year experienced person on these fountain pencils and nymphs. And he has got other hobbies also, other than uh, pens, of course. You know, I strongly believe that most of the time he spends with the pens, inks, and nymphs. He advises many people. He suggests so many people what to buy, what not to buy, how to buy, how not to buy, all these things. And other than uh, pens, inks, and nibs, coming to the hobbies, hobbies of uh, Sri Sudhir Kalenikar, sir, he is interested in bed shaving, audio stuff, watches, coffee. Very rare people have these hobbies like uh, single malt and beer also is one of the hobbies of uh, Sudhir, sir. And he's also interested in dogs, also cats. Mm, he's also interested in materialism and uh, anchronism. We'll come to know a little about uh, those things also in detail from Sudhir uh, Kalyanikar sir itself. Sudhir Kalyanikar sir is an active member of Fountain Pen Association of India. Lot many people are very much interested 
in knowing about the writing instrument. This is like an ornament for many people, many literates. Many uh, literates feel this as an ornament, especially coming to the fountain pen. This is a special, special, very special ornament for majority of the literates. And you will be surprised to know a lot many things about the fountain pens, inks, and nibs by Sudhir Kalyanikar, sir, from Mumbai. May I invite you, sir? Please uh, put your video on, and meanwhile, I'll uh, unmute you, sir. For a moment. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Uh, from there, in a mute mode itself, I want you to clap for sir. Let me see the video of clapping for Sudhi, sir. Thank you, sir, for joining. Thank you, sir. Hope uh, you're, you're unmuted, sir. Thank you yes, for joining. Welcome on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me to, on today's uh, Right Talk show. Uh, and uh, from your introduction, uh, you have been extremely effusive in your praise. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I, I think of myself as just uh, another normal guy trying to do some normal things in life. My interest, like you said, uh, primarily goes uh, towards fountain pens, but I also like some other things in life. So thank you so much for having me on uh, and look forward to interacting with uh, you and everyone here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We are all blessed and we are uh, eager to listen so many things from you, sir. And let me ask you, sir, let, let us uh, start the show. Let me ask you at the beginning, where and when did you start your journey, your love with the fountain pens, uh, actually? Um, firstly, with the fountain pens, I, I want to. Okay, so this goes back a very long way. Uh, my interest in fountain pens, the... I, you could say it started, I, I was in school, I'm an old guy, okay, uh, please, you can see the gray hair. Uh, okay. I was in school in uh, the late 1970s and mostly throughout the 1980s, right? And we had this, uh, uh, we had this rule, if you could call it, that as soon as you reached uh, fifth standard or fifth grade, uh, you would have to start using pens. Yes. And uh, the only pens that our school used to allow, because I, I went to a, a very strict uh, convent school, and the only pens they would allow would be fountain pens. In fact, some of our teachers uh, would really whip us if we were carrying uh, anything other than fountain pens. Even ballpoint pens were, uh, they were, I mean, there was no rule against them, but they were frowned upon, right? So that's when I got introduced to fountain pens. Uh, I, I wasn't, uh, I mean, I used to use it because it, it's like you're a school kid. Uh, you, you don't really want to bother too much about it. So I was using them. Around my eighth or my ninth standard, uh, I think my grandfather gifted me a Parker 61, which was oh. one of his, uh, uh, his prized possessions. And uh, I really liked the pen. Uh, and I told him, uh, I, I want this pen. And uh, he was nice enough to gift it to me. And that's, I think, where this was in 1986, I would say. Okay. 86 was when my uh, love for fountain pens actually started. After that, I started getting pens. Of course, money... Uh, at that time, being a student, money was tight. So um, I think I seriously got got my second serious pen only during my master's. That was when uh, I used to get a stipend. I had a university scholarship and I used to get a stipend. So I remember spending money on that. Uh, also, my pocket money a little bit would go into fountain pens and inks. So that's when it started. After that, it's been a little up and down. I've been active. Uh, I would say uh, as a serious enthusiast i started only uh, towards the end of the last millennium so around 1998 99 uh, and uh, after that it's been just uh, you know a complete real takeoff because uh, uh, i mean it's, it's been good fun after that so yeah that's that's, that's how great. i started that's how i got into fountain pens and uh, that's where i am today that's wonderful sir having a rule in this Tool that to carry only fountain pen, having a wonderful grandfather who gifted you, made uh, you to be in this question, I strongly believe. Uh, that's a wonderful thing and for many people also. If there are parents and grandfather, grandparents sitting over there, we strongly, you know, we from National Handwriting Academy also strongly recommend you to gift a beautiful pen and so that we'll never know uh, the future. 
they may give a talk on pens also like uh, sumir sir is talking to us now sir my personal question is this is a very very rare have a rare hobby it looks like uh, generally you know people have uh, different hobbies and common hobbies like when now if you ask people they say music books are all these things and how did you get into this peculiar uh, hobby of uh, fountain pens and nibs and things so i would say it's like any other hobby see uh, what happens in a hobby is there comes a time in your life when you realize that uh, you are really really seriously interested in one thing now for some people it uh, it could be a you know a physical hobby like uh, let's say trekking or mountaineering mountain climbing or di- scuba diving or you know driving whatever it is other people it could be more uh, yeah. uh, you know mental which has a higher mental category so i don't know fountain pens have always excited me i have always liked uh using them i liked seeing them uh when i was a kid i didn't know but i would still take them apart i would try to uh, see if i can make it write better or write differently so i don't know it's like any other hobby any other passion it it just comes to you it, it's it's okay. like finding love i suppose uh, you just know when it happens and for me fortunately it happened a little early um, and i know people who go for 40 years without realizing that they actually like fountain pens and when they jump into it they get into it big time i mean they were all all over the place after that so yeah uh, it's it's like any other hobby or any other passion uh, it just happens to you at one point of time and after that uh, usually there's no looking back that's wonderful sir it's like any other hobby is okay uh, but we do start many things and we do quit and you know we we leave it and we start a new hobby or something and to, to know about you you with this for more than 30 years now and uh, are there any hardships in between are there any particular uh, incidents which made you to stick uh, in spite of hardships uh, you know maybe you would have uh, stuck to this particular thing generally you know your parents my parents they asked us to become an engineer or a doctor so that you know we are very very happy or something uh, is there any point of time that you thought of leaving it or you thought of uh, sticking to that particular incident sir very interesting Uh, see like anything else uh, this also has its ups and downs right i would be uh, i would be silly if i pretended otherwise uh, so yes there was a time in my life when i had uh, i went through some uh, difficult times you could say in my professional life and at that point of time uh, all hobbies really go for a toss i mean you don't really understand what to do uh, there are things which are at that point of time more important which need to be given a greater amount of priority uh so yeah fountain pens did take a little bit of a back seat uh, when uh, when that happened this i would say was between 2001 2002 to about 2006 2007 for a few years uh, uh i was i was still interested in fountain pens i mean i i would watch uh, at that time there were not too many youtube videos but i would read a lot be active on fountain pen network but i was not buying or using them uh and uh, that's that's uh, so that one incident kind of put me off fountain pens and you know all credit to my wife because she knew this hobby of mine she knew i really like them uh, so around 2007 i think or 2006 it was our uh, i think fifth wedding anniversary she gifted me a lamy all star okay. and uh, that and you know she was instrumental in telling me that look you you shouldn't give it up it's something that uh, you really like and just because some other a negative thing happened in your life don't give up on something which is so interesting and useful to you so that's that was another incident which, which kind of got me back the biggest challenge like anybody else i would say in any other hobby is uh, as you start buying more and more pens you realize that there are more and more expensive pens and um, getting money is always a challenge so <laughs> i think that's probably one of the biggest challenges anybody can face i uh, to be honest i feel i've been fortunate that i've been able to get the pens that i like and uh, i hope it continues touch wood and thanks to god that's that's great sir so it's once again proved that uh, there is a lady there is a woman behind uh, everybody's success <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely full credit goes to her great sir wonderful good to know and uh, coming to the uh, part sir serious part what are the parameters if one has to buy a fountain pen or a good fountain pen a wonderful fountain pen what do you think are the far, uh, parameters according to you see i uh, i can answer this in two ways i can answer this uh, by saying that uh, 
you know, look at the material, look at the nibbid, look at this, look at that. That's one way of looking at it. And that's what most people would say. Uh, my answer is slightly different. My answer is go out and check out. If you, if you want to try a fountain pen, uh, go to a shop, ask them to show you some fountain pens and, and most shops will be happy to show you fountain pens. Pick them up, write with them and see what works for you. I think that is the best way to select a fountain pen because you can read whatever you want to read on the internet. There is, uh, I mean, there is terabytes of data, petabytes of data available on uh, what is the best way to choose a fountain pen. Personally, I feel that yes, you might listen to a lot of people. Uh, you can uh, uh, hear, you can see videos, uh, everything, but end of the day, if you buy something, if it does not work for you, it's a waste. It's a waste for you. It's a waste of the pen also. Uh, if you don't have the opportunity to go to a pen shop, what we have, uh, at least in Mumbai, I know it happens in Delhi, Bangalore, and other places, uh, we have regular meets. Uh, so what happens is, uh, in a meet, uh, we in Mumbai, I think there are about 15, 20 of us who are regulars. Uh, we get together, we meet, uh, we carry pens. If somebody is planning to check out a pen or want to, wants to buy a pen, now they can request if somebody else has the pen so that other person can carry it. You can check it out uh, in life uh, and in environment, how it writes. Uh, you can see how it looks. Uh, of course, that's probably the best way of doing it, you know, trying it out personally. Yes, it helps to look at what people are saying online. It helps to see what people are thinking about it. It helps to see what the experts are saying. Uh, but I have found that a lot of times what the experts say don't work for me. And uh, a lot of times what I like and what I what really works for me uh, is uh, something that is completely dissed and condemned by the experts. But uh, uh, I, I go by the philosophy that it's me, I'm using it, right? So uh, it's, it's much better that I get something which makes me happy, uh, which I'm happy to use uh, rather than just something which somebody has recommended on the internet. So okay. uh, that's my personal way of looking at it. And I know a lot of people will probably not agree with me, but that's how I am. Okay, okay. That's wonderful. Good, good to know that, sir. Uh, last time when we were talking to Casey Janathan, sir, uh, he was telling that there are some pens, you know, maybe especially a special edition pens, which would go goes for a crores of Indian rupees. Uh, start. Even now, mm, there are many websites uh, which are selling pens. There are many exclusive stores which are selling pens and lakhs of rupees and uh, a pen for a crore rupees or two crore rupees, 10 lakh rupees, you know, they're all, you know, very, very expensive, uh, exclusive pens. What do you think is a factor? What makes a pen, um, which is very expensive? What is a factor because of which they sell it for that, that much of cost? So again, um, it's not just pens, it's anything. I mean, you can have expensive anything. Right? You can have expensive watches, you can have expensive cars, you can have expensive paintings, you can have paintings which I can draw and make at home that, that won't look as good as, uh, you know, Edward Munch's cream, which is like a few hundred million dollars. So okay. the point is beyond the point, uh, beyond the point, I think you also need to look at these kind of pens as art. Okay, so if somebody is buying them, uh, they're not buying it because it is a pen which writes very well, or they're not buying a pen which is... Uh, you know, which feels very good in the hand to write. In most cases, as I know it, uh, there are these uh, extremely expensive pens uh, from Japan, which people buy just for the artwork on the pen. It is Urushi, it is Makie, and uh, these collectors don't even use the pens. They just keep them very nicely in a safe, in a showcase or something like that. And it, it is shown as art. So up to a certain point uh, in economics, you have this uh, uh, phenomenon called law of diminishing returns. Yeah. Okay, up to a certain point, uh, a pen will write better. So if, if it's a 50 rupee pen, uh, it'll write in a particular way. Maybe if you spend 200 rupees, it will write slightly better. 500 rupees, maybe a little better. Uh, 1,000, 5,000 rupees, you start going into gold nibs. Then again, it starts writing slightly even better than that. But after a certain point, uh, and I think the, the magic number is about, uh, in my opinion, about $150. 150 to 170 dollars, which would work out to about 12 to 15 thousand rupees, 12 thousand rupees approximately. Uh, beyond that, when you are starting to spend money, it's because uh, uh, it's it's more an emotional or a passion decision. 
uh, you cannot justify it with logic. You cannot logically say this pen is good because one, two, three. No, this pen is good because I like it. I have the money to spend on it, so I will spend on it. That's that's how uh, it works. It's it's like it's like a car, right? You can it, a, a Maruti or a Hyundai at five lakhs is an absolutely brilliant car, but there are still people who buy Ferraris and Rolls Royce cars, which are worth crores of rupees. Uh, is it a better car? Yes. Is, is the technology good? Yes. Is it worth four crores worth of technology? That's a debatable point. We don't know. Yeah, that's great. That's great. A beautiful point, sir. Uh, sir, what is the best fountain pen according to you? And if somebody wants to start it as a hobby like you have done, maybe somebody from this group also, if they want to start a, a hobby of uh, collecting the pens or something, what do you suggest and how do you want them to go over with and where to start? So if you ask me what is the best fountain pen, uh, the best fountain pen is what is available with me right now to write. If I want to write something and if that pen is there, that according to me is the best fountain pen because otherwise it is useless. I mean, I might have 300 pens which are lying in some uh, safe, safe deposit box somewhere. If I can't use it, uh, it's useless to me. Correct. So the best fountain pen is what I have lying here on my table. It yeah. could be an expensive Mont Blanc pen. It could be a cheap Chinese Jinhao pen or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. right? that's, that's, uh, that's the answer. I mean, it, it sounds like a silly answer, but honestly, that's in my opinion of what is the best fountain pen Good. your second question is uh, uh, is more uh, i i think this i get asked a lot uh, and i would like people again to do this uh, decide how much you are willing to spend on a fountain pen because like you said uh, pens can start from 50 rupees fountain pens and they can go up to a few crores of rupees right uh, very very few people would uh, go to a crore of rupees but there are people who say I will not spend more than 1,000 rupees or 2,000 rupees on a fountain pen. Okay, And please understand this. Let me uh, clarify this. Fountain pens are not a necessity. Okay, They are a desire. They are something that are a nice to have. Uh, and people have them because they want to use fountain pens. People don't have fountain pens because they are forced to use a fountain pen. Okay, So anything that comes under that desire uh, category is bound to cost money. Uh, because uh, even the government says fountain pens are a luxury. So these are going to be expensive, right? And, and when you can get a normal ballpoint pen um, uh, like this one for, you know, 10 rupees or 15 rupees, I don't see why anybody needs to even spend 50 rupees to buy a fountain pen. They, they need to have that interest. Once you have an interest, uh, then decide what is your budget. And then at a budget, I think there are some excellent pens that are available. I will just name two or three. At 50 rupees, you can get pens from Montex, Flair, etc., which are about 50 to 60 rupees. At about 100, 150 rupees, there are some good pens by Camlin called the Trinity. And there's also the Elegant, which is close to 200 rupees. Between 300 to 500 rupees, you can get pens by this Indian brand called Click Pens. Okay, they are based out of Indoor. Yeah. Click has a base entry level pen called Click Aristocrat which comes for less than 300 rupees. And that is, I think, a lovely starting point for people. Okay. If you're willing to spend a little more money, you can go for some international brands. There is a brand called Lamy. Um, and there is also another <laughs> pilot. Yeah. Yeah, Lamy Safari is is uh, known to be one of the most uh, popular entry-level pens. Yeah, but yeah, that I costs know. about 1,500 rupees uh, or, or 2,000 rupees. I don't know what exactly it costs. Yeah, but yeah, if you're willing to spend that kind of money, if you can afford it, yes, please, try a Lamy Safari. It's, it's a beautiful pen. Pilot Metropolitan, again, at around 1,500 rupees is also another lovely pen to start with. Okay, on the Indian side, there are a couple of custom pen makers. Uh, there is one ASA pens, ASA pens based out of Chennai and Lotus pens based out of Mumbai. They also make some very good entry level pens, which are in the 1000 to 1500 mark. So this would be a good starting point. But like I said, it's an expensive thing, right? You, you are not going to find a fountain pen at 10 rupees or 15 rupees. Uh, but then if your budget is 300, there is a good pen for it. If your budget is 2000 rupees, there are good pens for that. Okay, okay. Uh, I know especially you love fountain pens and uh, what makes you love fountain pens over ballpoint pens or gel pens or roller ball pens? And what if I ask you to throw some lights, special lights on fountain pen when you compare it with other kind of pens? Okay, when it comes to writing, uh, what I find is that a fountain pen, you cannot write fast with a fountain pen. Uh, 
uh, of necessity a fountain pen will slow you down while writing and i feel that makes a lot of difference to me uh, when i'm writing see i will also be very honest and confess one thing there are times when i use a ballpoint pen or a gel pen and the reason for that is if i am let's say on a call and i am supposed to be minuting that call if i'm supposed to be writing the minutes people speak very fast these days we have uh, we can record it and transcribe it later but there are times when somebody uh, my boss for example calls me and says okay make make a list of these five points which i want done by friday afternoon and at that point i cannot tell my boss to go slow i cannot record him right so i need to quickly jot down a few points and at that point i prefer a ballpoint pen or i prefer a gel pen because it writes very fast it allows me to write fast but as a rule if i have the capability or if i have the freedom to pace my writing i prefer a fountain pen because it makes me write slow so two things happen with that one is uh, i write slightly better okay my handwriting looks better which makes me feel good that's all now it it is not for anybody else second is it also makes me think a little bit while i am writing if i am not if i my thinking slows down my thinking is also not at that crazy uh, speed uh, which i think is a very good thing so these two things make a lot of difference to me when i write with a fountain pen two i just because i love fountain pens and because i love writing i'm just able to I, I think write better. That's all. The the experience is better. Yes. Uh, as a school head or as a government official, if I ask you, do you recommend a fountain pen to the whole institution? Do you have any reasons or something like that? As an institution. See, personally, if you ask me, uh, there is again a uh, an emotional answer to this, and there is a logical answer coming from the brain. The emotional answer is always going to be yes, because I like pens. I would love people to use fountain pens. but look at it logically how easy would it be as a as the head of an institution or a head of a government to bring fountain pens into regular use right today we have people who don't even write they type or they use their phone and they are always on the phone a lot of people don't know what is the whole art of writing itself which in which i think you are doing a very good job uh, by having your handwriting institute so a lot of people are not even writing and i'm talking about general public okay we're not talking about the 1% or the 2% who is interested in fountain pens and interested in writing such people will always find a way they will find a way to come out and say okay i want to use a fountain pen and they will find reasons to use it but for me to just go and say that everybody should use a fountain pen uh it will make me feel good but i don't think it will be a, a decision which you can implement very easily Okay. okay. Uh, I mean, I think about it. I've I've tried to get my daughter to get into fountain pens, and that itself has not been easy. Um, I've not been. My wife sometimes uses. She has one airmail pen which she uses, which she likes. Um, I've got a couple of brothers, cousins. I think one of them is on on the call also here, into fountain okay. pens. But uh, really, it's it's not easy. It's not easy to. But just because I have a passion, I cannot expect other people also to have a passion and to use that, right? so you need to wear a different hat when you are the head of an institution and you need to see what is it that works best and what is convenient for the largest the majority of people rather than you know personal interests or one or two people so i probably would not do that i i would not insist that people should use but yes what i would do is work with some institutions and fpi is one of them we are doing that work with some institutions to create the awareness to get people to start thinking about fountain pens and if people like it yes they are happy to use it i mean i would be the happiest person but as a rule i think uh, it would be uh, counter intuitive i don't think it would serve the purpose people would do it just because there is a rule and that that is never the uh, best way to implement something that's yeah. my personal opinion that's true uh, now coming to the ink part of it it's it's like a fuel to the vehicle so yes. coming to the ink part uh, lot lot many inks uh, i have seen right from uh, Fifteen twenty Indian rupees to thousands, uh, it goes. And uh, what what is uh, what are your uh, lines on ink? I think yes, you are right. That ink also comes in a variety of uh, variety of price ranges. Uh, from whatever little experience I have, what I have seen is it is the color of the ink that actually matters more than. Uh, which ink you are using yes there are certain brands which i would not recommend to people 
okay because these brands uh, do not the, the ink that is made has been consistently bad when we have seen and there are certain brands which i would definitely recommend because those inks are really good now uh, consistently when i have seen those inks they have responded well and it's not just me it's also other people uh, in this hobby more senior people in this hobby who have similar experience uh, so yeah that is one point about the ink second is a lot of pen makers especially if you have a expensive mont blanc pen and if you fill an ink which is not a mont blanc ink uh they will actually deny the warranty to you if something happens to it and you go to mont blanc store uh, their service center and you ask them look this is a mont blanc pen uh, they will, the first thing they'll ask you which ink was you were you using and if you say waterman or pelican or shafer or camlin or something like that they will say no you're not supposed to use and it is written in their warranty card that you should not use any other ink not not that it's going to make a problem Um, that's like saying that in maruti you should use petrol only from a particular petrol yeah i'm sorry my mic just fell down okay i hope i'm still audible yes yes okay thank you so uh, so for that reason yes inks are important uh, it if it's going to destroy your warranty and if you spend 40000 rupees on a pen it is probably better to use the mont blanc ink which is slightly more expensive but yes at least that warranty will not go for the cost but otherwise yes there are certain brands uh, whose inks are better there are certain brands whose inks i uh, would avoid uh, and there are inks which are expensive i'm sorry there are inks which are expensive and there are inks which are not very expensive uh, both of them work actually so it, it's not like the uh, the way the ink comes on paper hello are you able to hear me uh, mr rao sorry i think uh, mr rao is facing some issue um, so let me let me just answer this uh, question and then come back to it so uh, like i was saying ink is important it is important it is like the fuel that you use in a car if you have a car uh, which is not very expensive you can use any normal fuel and uh, and it would work properly fine uh, if you have let's say a ferrari um, or let's say a mercedes or something like that uh, and if there is a better quality of fuel if you can afford such a car it is better to use a better ink and uh, uh, sorry a better fuel same thing goes with pens if you're using an expensive pen uh, there are brands which have a better quality so uh, go ahead with those inks rather than any other inks i think uh, mr rao has dropped so what i'm going to do is just uh, take a pause here for a minute and let me see if i can reach him on the phone just give me a minute please while i go on mute
I, th I think I'm audible. Sorry for the break. There was a little disturbance. Uh, yes, I am back here. Yes. Yes. So, sorry viewers, there was a little technical issue. My laptop got disconnected. Now I'm on my mobile. Uh, thank you. Please, uh, sir. Uh, so, we were talking about uh, the inks, and uh, later part, uh, my question is uh, Do you take opinions from somebody when you are buying a pen? Or what do you suggest as you know where we can where can we go to take a decision uh, regarding buying a pen? Or what is it about you? Okay, uh, later on, you know, we'll talk about us. What do you do when you buy a new pen or when you go for a new instrument? Do you take a social media opinion or some senior's opinion? Do you consult somebody? Uh, the answer to that is both yes and no. Uh, the yes part of it is yes, I do like to check out what is available. I do like to check out which are the new pens which are available, uh, which are the new inks which are available. Yes, I check that out. I do watch reviews. Uh, I uh, check out what uh, other people have to say about it. I discuss them in forums, um, not really, and not really on WhatsApp, but in, on a chat called Telegram. I'm I'm pretty active in a few uh, groups, so I talk with them. Uh, but all said and done, at the end, I take my decision myself. Uh, I uh, the the pattern, The point that I'm trying to make here is uh, like anything else. Uh, there are a few people. Like for example, if if I had to take some kind of a major life decision, okay, if I had to let's say buy a new house or a new car, uh, there are certain people. I would do the research. I I would uh, uh, also talk to a few people. But only people whose opinions matter to me and people who I trust. Okay, uh, if I just kept listening to anybody and everybody because everyone has an opinion, then that would really go out of the window. So when it comes to pens, uh, there are a few people whose opinions I trust, and these are the same people that I interact with. I just ask them what they think about it. But in the end, I believe the decision always has to be my own. I have to own it up and. Whether I like the pen or don't like the pen, the consequences, it's my decision, my consequences. Yes. Uh, so so that's that's how I work it out. But yes, it does make a lot of sense to go online uh, to try and figure out what other people are thinking about it. Uh, maybe if, if you hear 10 people saying that there is a problem with the, let's say, the feel or the nib of a pen, uh, maybe it's a good idea to wait till uh, they, they have resolved it, right? Uh, but uh, that should not influence the decision in the sense the core decision itself. Now you may decide to wait and watch and then say, okay, uh, looks like this particular pen has got a few issues. Um, maybe I should wait for it or, or looks like this is really a good pen. Uh, maybe I should buy it. But then if the internet or if social media is a deciding factor, uh, I personally don't operate like that. I, I think that's a very unfair okay. influence to have on, on me personally. Okay. Uh, so coming to the investment part of it, uh, do you think a fountain pen, buying a fountain pen is an investment? Is it an investment? No, 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 no. In no way should you consider fountain pens as an investment uh, because I don't think they go up or down at a particular, uh, in, in any particular or reliable way. Okay, fountain pens, expensive fountain pens you can buy, uh, but you should not think that I'm buying this as an investment. Buy it because you like it and keep it and then at one point of time if you want to sell it sell it you might get a profit you might get a loss that doesn't matter 
but i think it's a it's not a very smart thing to buy things as an investment but my opinion is if you want to invest uh, get hold of a good financial planner uh, they can get you much much better results okay and not fountain pens i have not seen a single fountain pen uh, appreciate in in any kind of consistent value they are not reliable so you you can buy yes uh, as an investment you might get a profit but uh, there's no guarantee about it on the other hand if you put the same money in an sip for example i'm pretty sure 6 to 8% any good financial planner can get you results even in this sad economy so don't don't please don't buy fountain pens as an investment i don't recommend okay. it at all okay what makes certain people to put it in auction like i've seen some groups on uh, facebook and some online there are few people those who have a very old pen and they put it for an auction which goes to lakhs and crores of rupees so it is it's it's a market equation of supply and demand uh, there is no supply for these uh, old vintage pens uh, they are rare pens uh, and uh, there is a demand and when there is a supply demand mismatch uh, the person who is selling it uh, will always try to maximize what they want to do by going for an auction auction is probably the best way to maximize it because you are just bidding people against each other and and you get it but again an auction can be a double edged sword because uh, if if the right people are not there at an auction you might not even sell the piece so okay. yeah but that's that's how it works at auctions it's it's just okay. like yeah. supply is very low demand is very high and uh, let people fight it out and may the one who is paying the best uh, highest price win okay that's very good sir uh, you you answer sir you know quite uh, interesting in you know, straight forward you you're giving a fantastic answer sir and now coming to the repair parts were one of the very rarest people very few people those who are into repairs of this nib a particular thing uh, if something happens to my nib you are into repairing the nibs maybe you grind the nibs uh, you repair it and when did you start it and uh, what made you to start this so it started obviously with my own pens right i was fooling around with my pens and then i realized that uh, you know after removing the nib and the feet from a pen i realized i had not put it back properly or there was some problem uh, this was again at the time when the internet was just starting like i said at the time when actually i was not too interested in using pens but i was interested in knowing a little more about them uh, so okay. i started going uh, there is this uh, fantastic forum called fountain pen network uh, okay. and i i strongly recommend that to anybody who wants to learn about fountain pens just okay. go to the internet search for fountain pen network you should get it uh, then there is again another uh, set of people who are extremely senior in this hobby have spent a lot of years uh, these people are called nib masters okay and uh, uh, when i was starting uh, this this hobby was not so crowded there were a, there were limited people in the hobby so i was actually able to get in touch with some of the nib masters i could send them email i could send pictures of uh, pens and they they really helped me out and they suggested this is what you could do and this is what uh, can be done so that is how it started started with my own pens then my friends here in mumbai uh, they started uh, having problems and i started fixing them uh, their pens uh, and then you know it was word of mouth and just about a month back i uh, set up my own website also for people who are interested who want to get in touch with me for this kind of nib repairs okay and uh, what 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 is about the what about the little more about uh, pen communities if you can throw some lights on that what is the role of the pen communities what do they do and what are the wonderful communities we have in our country especially in india maybe in abroad also okay uh, so there are two types of pen communities if you ask me one is a formal uh, community uh, like uh, the fountain pen association of india or you know any other kind of association any other kind of group which is formed formally but more important in my opinion are a whole set of informal communities for example okay. if you are based in hyderabad and 10 people in hyderabad decide to get together every month and meet okay you can have a hyderabad fountain pen meet every single month right the same thing can happen i i know it happens in delhi uh, because uh, we mm-hmm. have friends in that uh, then it also happens i believe in kolkata chennai bangalore um, i had heard about hyderabad also i'm not sure if it happens so that is one thing which you know you don't need a you don't need an association to do that it's just 
uh, five or ten people interested in fountain pens who are getting together and saying that okay, we are we are going to have fun. So in Mumbai we have that. We used to meet about once a month very regularly till this uh, pandemic hit. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that once things are back to normal, we will start that thing again. Right. So that that is that is a very informal kind of a meeting, and that helps a lot because people. can go to such meets and if they have issues they can get them resolved they can see new pens they can see new inks they can try out uh, one one other important part which nobody talks about when talking about fountain pens is paper okay there yeah. is pen there is uh, there is ink and then there is paper because if you write on bad paper you will not get a good experience with fountain pens yeah so these communities are there then there is one very unique thing that uh, this company called pelican does uh, they yeah. have what is called a pelican hub every year what they do is they uh, they have this hub they don't organize it themselves what they do okay. is they they ask people to get together under the pelican banner uh, okay. they have they have a hub master and this person's job is to get people together and what pelican does is just to keep it interesting they send some small gifts so they send maybe an ink bottle they send some notepads stuff like that which people can give uh, the hub master can give to others and uh, this usually happens in september in fact if this year it could have happened on 18th of september okay but because of the pandemic it did not happen so this has oh. been happening since 2014 so it is partly formal and partly informal informal because the way it is conducted is completely dependent on the person driving it but formal because it has the pelican branding behind it and they really encourage people they are the ones who register the people and you register directly with pelican so that also helps a lot it there is a little bit of um, uh, awareness that's created by pelican so i think that's a good starting point for most people if you want to get into fountain pens go to pelican.com p e l i k a n uh, and uh, slash hubs uh, there is a registration it, it should happen around may of june may or june and then around september we have the actual hub happening so that's okay. a community that's that's uh, so th this is what see a part of a community is is like anything else it is to help the fellow people and give guidance there are senior people there are junior people everything happens so it's yeah. like any other kind of community wonderful points about the pen community sir thank you and uh, see there are few people like me i can say uh, those who buy pens on easy monthly installments and they also go for a bank loan do you suggest it actually <laughs> i i would not recommend that i okay. i think I, no no i'll tell you why i feel i feel that a pen like i said right in the beginning is not an, a necessity uh, even though i feel so strongly about it you can do without a pen so i have heard about this concept it is a concept which is called fun money okay what it means is that you get a certain income in a month or a certain amount of money uh, you okay. spend it on the most important things like your house your family um, uh, you know for your regular necessities so that is one part of the money the second part of the money is what you are investing for the long term so your savings your mutual funds whatever you are investing okay? and after okay. that a little part is left over that okay. left over money is what i call fun money and okay. that is the money that you should use for any hobbies right. i don't think anybody uh, I, i would not recommend anybody take a bank loan or you know do a, no pen on the world is so important that you have to take a bank loan you would rather spend it on a on your house or on your car or on your family things like that which i believe are much more important pens are good they are important but uh, it it should not become an addiction it should stay a hobby so that is my open and honest feedback about that please don't take bank loans please don't break your savings or fds or mutual funds to buy pens no please <laughs> whatever yeah, money is left thing. over save that yes whatever money is left over save that for 6 months and then go and buy splurge it you will also not feel so bad about it so yes that's, that's my opinion <laughs> you're so modest and uh, it's a beautiful answer sir and sir do you have any kind of presentation with your rare uh, instruments or something i'll make you a host uh, if you can um, show See, us I, I, i don't really have a presentation with rare pens or anything of that sort <laughs> my my pens i i post off and on on instagram but what i do have is a small presentation which talks a little bit about how fountain pens came into this world what is the history 
what what do they look like but this is a very basic presentation if people are yeah. aware of content pens they might get bored uh, okay. but uh, if people are not aware then this this is a good entry point and this is a good interesting uh, thing that, that so, must be interesting please okay so uh, let me just share my uh, screen So please let me know when you are able to see this uh, screen. Yeah. So I call it's, this a primer, a primer on fountain pens. Thank you. Yeah, I call this a primer on fountain pens because that is what it is. It is like um, in the US you would call it fountain pens one zero one or something like that. That is my full name, Sudhir Kalyanikar. Uh, at the pen person is my handle on Instagram. Uh, okay. Also on Telegram, if anybody wants to uh, get in touch with me, that is the best way and the best place to get in touch with me. I am on WhatsApp, like I said, but I am not very active on WhatsApp. I am only on WhatsApp because I am on like five or six family groups, and my family would ostracize me if I was not on WhatsApp. So that's what. Personally, I feel it's not a great technology. I prefer Telegram. It's more secure. Okay. So okay. let me just quickly tell you what I am uh, planning to cover here. Uh, so the first is what is a fountain pen? Uh, believe it or not, uh, fountain pen actually there is a technical definition of a fountain pen. So we'll go okay. through that a little bit about the history. What are the different parts? What is the anatomy? What are the filling mechanisms that you can have in a fountain pen? Uh, what is the feed and what are nibs? Okay, I will not may not cover it in this particular order, but we'll cover uh, mostly all of this. I will not spend too much time on every slide because there is not too much content. It's it's more pictures and bullet points. Uh, but at any point of time, if somebody wants, or later on, if you can make a note of it and have a question, I'll be happy to uh, take any questions. Right. So let's go directly to this point, which says, "What is a fountain pen?" Okay. And please uh, remember, we are talking only about fountain pens. We are not talking about writing instruments. Okay. So this is a definition that Wikipedia gives. So it is a nib pen. So the first part is there has to be a nib on that pen, okay. Second, it has to contain an internal reservoir of liquid ink. Okay, liquid ink is also important because it's not gel ink; it is not any other kind of ink, but an internal reservoir of proper liquid ink. And there is a feed through which this ink is taken out, and it is sent to the nib, which puts it on the paper. And the action that it works on is gravity and capillary action. Fountain pen is not rocket science. Uh, there is a gentleman, very respected gentleman in this community called uh, Richard Binder. Uh, he says that a fountain pen is nothing but a controlled leak. So basically, when you take a pen, let me just get a pen here. So when you get a pen like this, and you have a nib here, sorry, you have a nib. When you are writing, what is happening is the pen is actually leaking. But there is a feed here and the nib here, which is controlling the way it leaks onto the paper. So it looks like it is writing properly. But otherwise, gravity, capillary action, and it is just leaking. So that is what it is. It is a controlled leak. People can fill this particular reservoir. You can fill it directly through an eye dropper. You can have something that uses vacuum to fill it up, or you can have uh, pre-filled cartridges where where ink is already available. Okay. So these are three, four. Ways in which you can fill the pen up. So that is a fountain pen. Okay, and this particular gentleman is known as the inventor of the fountain pen. Okay, uh, his name I will not try to pronounce, but he's a Romanian gentleman. Um, you you might hear a lot of uh, talk about uh, 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 another gentleman called L. E. Waterman, Louis Edson Waterman, who was supposed to have invented the fountain pen. He did invent one particular type of pen called a safety pen. And he's also got a patent for it, which we will see here. But the fountain pen honestly dates back a long before him, right? So that is about the uh, fountain pens. So, Mr. Rao, I believe people might have questions. What do you suggest? Uh, do you suggest that we should take questions as we have on the slide, or do you think we should wait till the end and then take questions? Okay, I don't know if he's online. Uh, 
I think he's not online. Anyway, what I'm going to do is because I don't have the controls, I'm going to just. Uh, Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I think you have uh, made me a, a host. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. It's wonderful, sir. We have also in a few questions and people are interested, but the very good thing is most of their questions are answered in our uh, talk. And now my question is, sir, did you complete this presentation or do you have anything extra? Like I, I do. I do. There is, there are about seven, eight more slides on this presentation. Okay, please, so could uh, I just finish it off? Okay, let's yeah, let's, let's yeah. do that. Let's let's go ahead and complete this presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, if when we look at the contents, I said we will be talking a little bit about the history of fountain pens. So, let's yeah. get into the history again. Please remember, this is not the history of writing instruments. Writing instruments okay. go back a long way. They go back much before fountain pens. This is the history of an instrument which has a nib which has its own reservoir where ink can be filled and carried. Okay. So that is what we are talking about here. Yeah. So there was, there is, there is written evidence about a caliph or a, a king or a, a key person in Egypt uh, who wanted to have a pen. This was long back. I think this was the fifth or the sixth century. Uh, it, it's in, uh, it is documented that he wanted a pen that would not stain his hands or clothes. So he was given a pen with a reservoir where they could hold it upside down without leaking it. Um, so I don't know how and what this was about, but it is a documented history. Uh, okay. So this was probably the first ever fountain pen created in the world. Okay. okay. Now there could be undocumented history or, you know, uh, other documentation, uh, which may or may not be talking about fountain pens. I'm pretty sure every culture would have, tried something or the other like this. You know, there is talk about Leonardo da Vinci also working out uh, on, on different types of instruments. Maybe he also invented a fountain pen. We never know. But this is what is documented and available. Also, all my references are available on the internet. So uh, all of this information is available in the public domain on the internet if anybody wants to check it out. Right. Yep. So then we come to 1636, 1663, when people again started making fountain pen models, which had reservoirs. Or the first gentleman, Daniel Schwenter, he had, uh, at that time, there were quill pens. So what he did was uh, he cut a quill pen and put another quill in it. And the, the, the quill at the rear used to hold ink. And when he wanted ink in the first quill, he would press that and it would come into the first quill. And then he would write with it. So he has, uh, he had invented one. This gentleman called Samuel Pepys had also invented a metal pen which could carry its own ink. Uh, to somebody called Nicholas Bion or Bion, I don't know how it is pronounced. Uh, my apologies if it's wrongly pronounced. He was also somebody who spent a lot of time creating pens. In fact, he was uh, in, in the next one, I, I will show you a patent that was granted to him. Uh, so these were people who had actually made it. Now, uh, conventional wisdom or, or the common story is that Ellie Waterman was the first person to patent and make a fountain pen. Uh, that has been, uh, it's been, it's been challenged and it's also been proved wrong in, in many, many uh, uh, forums. Uh, so I will not go into that. We'll also then talk about which were the patents and what was the pen leakage. Now the famous Waterman story goes something like this. Uh, it says that he was an insurance salesman, uh, which is the truth, actually, he was. And he went to one of his clients. And at that time, they used to have pens which were dip pens. So you had to dip in ink and write it. So he was carrying a pen, but he did not have an ink well uh, to dip it. His customer also didn't have it. And this person, this uh, Mr. Waterman, because he could not get the customer's signature, he lost the contract. So he went back. And by the time he came back, the customer had already signed the insurance contract with somebody else. And he got so irritated, apparently, that he decided, I will, I'm going to make my own pen. And, and he created. Now, we don't know whether this, uh, this story is true or it's just a story. 
uh, but it's a very common story that you get to hear when you get into the pen hobby right so his patent is interesting because he has made something called as a waterman safety let's go to the next slide and i'll tell you what that is so i talked about nicolas uh, yeah. beyond but after him the same person the romanian petrache uh, or whatever i i'm sorry again i could not uh, pronounce his name he was the one who is officially agreed to as the inventor of the fountain pen this was from the 1800s so waterman's uh, patent came much later towards the end of the 19th century this was the french patent that was given to this romanian gentleman who who made who created the first uh, fountain pen the first officially documented and patented fountain pen let me be clear okay let's go next to some other interesting this is a famous patent that uh, l e waterman louis edson waterman had created this as you can say is in 1884 okay and this is probably the most well known uh, patent in the fountain pen community uh, almost anybody has everybody has heard about this and they have heard about the story also most of them have at least okay so this is what it looks like waterman then also came up with another important uh, pen called the safety pen because what used to happen was that leakage was a big problem okay even if the pens had their own reservoirs the leakage was a huge problem for everybody and this waterman safety actually i have this pen but i it's in another room uh, maybe i can just go and get it the waterman safety uh, is a pen where you can fill in ink and even if you turn it upside down it will not leak so that's that's how this pen uh, looks and works so this is another iconic pen because this was the first uh, patented non leaking fountain pen though all pens even today can leak if there is an issue with them uh, but under normal use under normal circumstances this this was probably the first pen which was put up as a non leaking or a safety pen which you could carry in your pocket or which you could put in your bag without fear that it is going to leak there are others also but this is probably the most iconic one okay okay so what are the parts of a fountain pen again i will try and explain this in a very simple way uh, but you might hear of these terms okay a fountain pen has a uh, a cap if you look at the picture on the lower part it has a cap it has a barrel the the big part so here is the cap of the fountain pen when you open it up this part is called the barrel this yeah. part is called the section there is a feed yeah. and there is a nib so this is what a fountain pen is all about okay but this is not the only thing now this is one way of looking at it if you look at this pen which the next pen which is my favorite fountain pen which is a pelican m800 if you look at it and if you really open it up these are all the parts of a fountain pen so yes at a simple level that is what a fountain pen is about but this particular pen has close to about 15 to 20 parts which all go together to form the pen okay and this is where the cap has not been opened the clip has not been opened and in a lot of things have not yet been opened but these are this is what it looks like okay okay again uh, let's now come to the nib of the fountain pen the most commonly used material for nibs is steel material means what is the nib made of okay so nib is made of this material this is a steel nib if you can look at it here what i'm showing this is a steel nib so you can have steel you can have gold gold comes in 14 carat 18 carat 21 carat titanium is catching up these days titanium nibs are a uh, very nice to write with uh, there's one brand called visconti which makes palladium nibs which is again another material i have heard that people have been trying out platinum nibs but i am i don't have any documented uh, evidence for this uh, i have heard that people are trying it out so this is the material which the nib is made of going forward every nib at its tip has a small ball kind of a thing which you may be able to see uh, if you see it by the naked eye but if you use a magnifying glass or a loop you will be able to see it much better this is the tip which actually gives which touches the paper so it is important that the tip shape is proper the tip uh, physically the tip is in a proper condition 
so that you are able to see it and write with it and if you talk to people they'll say it's made of iridium there is a term called ipg iridium point germany uh, which is there it is stamped on the nibs also sometimes uh, but it is not actually iridium i think from the 1950s they've stopped using iridium it's mostly an alloy of these four or five uh, materials osmium rhenium ruthenium tungsten so that's that's what it is all about okay it's it's not okay, i'm sorry let me put this here. Okay. Um, so that's that's what is about the nib tip now why is the tip important because if you most of the times when you have a problem with your fountain pen the issue is somewhere in the tip uh, it is this part if you can see my mouse uh, cursor uh, this slit that goes in uh, and and then comes into the uh, tip that is the part that usually has a problem and that is the part from where the ink flows so if your pen is not writing chances are this is a this is where the issue is okay going to the next slide you can look at the different parts of a nib again you don't need to know all this um, it's just interesting to see it and uh, put it up there uh, but this is what is called a whole nib unit uh, this the the two parts of the nib are called the shoulder i'm going from right to left then just next to the shoulder next to that slit is are the two tines which are the two parts of the nib then there is a slit the slit which goes down to what is called the breather hole which is in the center okay and the tipping which i talked about and the tip of the nib so the tipping is usually the nib is like this made of gold and they take a ball they melt the ball and they fuse it here so it is welded kind of on the tip of the nib and then they give shape to that ball of nib to in a way that it can help you write okay so these are the parts of the nib these are the different nib widths nib widths means uh, how will a nib write okay so on the left you have ef which is extra fine then f is fine m is medium b is broad bb is double broad a is a german term uh, anna fanger i feel i believe it's called but it means beginner uh, so what they do for an a nib is it's like a medium nib but it's not shaped it is just a ball of uh, uh, it's just a ball of tipping so no matter how you write it and this is for small kids uh, who are not able to write with the pen held in a particular position so even if they turn the nib here and there the pen will still write okay okay and then you have left handed i o m is oblique o means oblique so oblique medium oblique broad oblique double broad and then there are calligraphy nibs which have 1.1 mm thickness 1.5 1.9 so these are the different nib widths nib sizes these are specialized nibs my recommendation to most people who are starting is go for a medium or a fine uh, these nibs are good enough for uh, anyone to start with and then you might decide that no i want something which writes little broader most people say that i want to write something which writes a little thinner because if they are coming from the ballpoint uh, universe ballpoint pens usually write very thin so they want a writing which is thin so then you can go for an extra fine but uh, these are the different nibs this is a very common brand uh, which i mentioned earlier it's called lamy so this is from uh, from a site which was giving information on how the nib uh, widths or nib sizes are okay the next important part in any uh, uh, pen is a feed a feed is what is Sorry yeah. to disturb you, Mr. Sudhir. Uh, how a left-handed nib uh, makes a difference uh, in, from a right-handed one? Okay, I'll tell you how it works. So, if you look at the nib under a uh, under a magnifying glass, the top of the nib is something like this, okay, okay. or it or or something like this. Okay, right? this is the tipping. This yeah, is what yeah. touches the paper. This is what touches the paper like this. Got Now. It. if this is my tipping and it is round uh, when i am writing with a pen let me just show you this when i am writing with a pen mm -hmm. i hold the pen in a particular way okay most of the people hold the pen mm -hmm. sorry at a slight angle it's either left or it is right true people very rarely do people keep the pen at exactly the right angle i mean you you don't put it exactly like this most people twist it a little bit on this side or a little bit on that side True. right 
So what happens in an oblique nib is, if this is the tipping of the oblique nib, what they do is they cut it so that it looks something like this. Okay. Okay. So when you touch your nib tip at an angle, that is when you are able to write properly. So it is more useful for people who touch the pen at a slight angle on the left hand side or the right hand side. So if you okay. touch it on the left hand side, you make it what is called a left oblique. So it gets cut like this. If you put it on the right hand side, it's a right oblique. So, and when somebody with a left hand is writing, a right-handed oblique works better for them because left left-handed people when they are writing like this, the problem when they are writing like this is their hands sometimes wipe the ink as they write. Okay, True. so that's a problem. If you're writing right-handed, you're writing like this. You're going from here to here, so your hand is not going out. On the yeah. other hand, if I'm writing from as a left-hander, if I'm going from here to here, there's a chance that this might get erased or it might get wiped off. So yeah. most of the time, what happens is left-handed people write like this. They okay. have a it, it's what is called a hook way of writing. So they yes. tend to write like this so that their hand does not erase what they are writing with. So if you can give them the right kind of an angle, mm-hmm. I know left-handed people who can write very well like this also without yeah. touching and without uh, putting it. So that's why those obliques uh, matter. That, that's where they come into the picture. So do you think uh, it adds to the left-hander? So a left-hander has to buy a nib of a uh, left-hander. So not have- necessary. Not necessary. They can mm-hmm. first try. Uh, it depends on their writing style, writing angle. It also depends on uh, how they are writing it. They should try it out and, and, and buy it. Just don't go for it just because you are a left-hander. If you are able to write normally with a normal pen, normal pens will work better for them. That's perfect. Sorry to disturb Please go ahead with the feed. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Okay, so the next most important part of the pen is called the feed. Okay, and the feed has two parts. One is, these are the fins. The fins job is to take away any excess ink. And this is called the ink channel. That is the most important part of the feed where it draws ink from the reservoir up to the nib. It gets through capillary action and gravity, it brings it. And sometimes we have some issues like the pen is writing very dry. I mean, not enough ink is coming out. So in those cases, what I do is I uh, open the feed channel a little bit. I, I widen it or I cut it a little bit and then more inks, ink comes there. Some people have the other problem. They feel too much ink is going, in which case you have to actually work on this channel to make sure that less ink starts coming in. Okay. So it, this is what actually regulates the pen. Oh. Okay. And then we have uh, what are called filling mechanisms. Uh, filling mechanisms are uh, what, how do you fill the pen? Okay. Yeah. So the pen here on the extreme left, it is called a gamma. This pen is a eyedropper, which means you just open it. This pen I have is also an eyedropper. What you do is you open this section, this part, and then you, you pour the ink inside. You use either an eyedropper, you can use a syringe or something of that sort. The other one, that we have is called a self-filling design. Self-filling is, you can just put the uh, pen inside the Parker 61 that I talked about. It's got a capillary action and it pulls the ink by itself. So that is another filling system. Then there is piston filler. Piston filler is nothing but you open the piston, it goes all the way down and then you pull it back. The piston comes back and it pulls up ink. It's, it's like there is piston, there is vacuum. There are a number of other things which use this vacuum mechanism. So what they do is they create a vacuum. You put the nib inside the uh, uh, inside the ink bottle. You create a vacuum and then you release the vacuum. The ink gets pulled up. So uh, there are three or four ways of doing it, but the principle is the same. Then there are some other modern filling mechanisms like, uh, you know, there's a fancy mechanism used by a company called Conid. It's called a bulk filler. So you have to unscrew it, come all the way back, screw up the piston, go up, down, stuff like that. So all that is one. Then uh, that the, in the earlier ones, you used to also get a sack, uh, which is a rubber sack. So if you, yeah. if anyone has used the old hero pens, they would know that you had to press it or the old yeah. Parker yeah. pens you would get, you need to press the sack. Again, what it does is creates a vacuum so that the ink gets pulled in. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I had uh, in my presentation. If there are any specific questions, I'll be happy to take that, them. That's great. That's a, such a wonderful presentation. It's an eye opener for many people. We we are not aware of a lot many things what you have shown in your presentation. So nice of you. And um, 
as a last question like i i wanted uh, you to throw some interesting facts or figures or whatever you have regarding these three things fountain pens inks and nibs if at all we have uh, not covered anything because you've been in this field for more than 30 years and please throw some uh, lights on these three, three these three things whatever we have left or whatever you have in mind so i'll tell you what i believe uh, i i don't have the data because i don't think there is published data on this but uh, what i can tell you is that uh, I'll, i'll take this in two parts one is globally and also in india uh, india has a very rich history of fountain pens okay there is this brand called ratnam sons uh, from yeah. rajmundri uh, yes. in ap uh, which uh, who made a pen uh, for mahatma gandhi right True. so that is the kind of legacy that we have there is this uh, pen maker in uh, chennai uh, called the uh, gemen company which has been making pens for a long time really long time they have a pen called gama which has been famous for a very long number of time uh, yes okay. they are still they are still active you can still get a gama pen you can still get a ratnam sun pen so see pen making there are some fantastic pen makers in india today uh, i have named a few and and uh, there are a, a lot of others who are really making an effort to bring fountain pens back Uh, they are creating fountain pens people are able to get these fountain pens they are even exporting pens and indian pens uh, which are getting exported for the price that you pay uh, you do get very good quality okay so uh, that is one very good thing so pen usage fountain pen usage is definitely increasing uh, if i go back even to the early 2000s uh, i i mean there were a few pen people using it Uh, when i attended my pelican hub in 2014 2015 i used to think that i am the only person in mumbai interested in fountain pens i mean that is a little silly of my part obviously but there was no way of knowing who else is interested so the community was not there it has started growing so the communities have started growing pen usage has definitely started growing uh, internationally also it has grown the number of brands if you see from a time like uh, you know youtube videos started coming out in let's say 2006 2007 and in 13 years the number of reviewers of fountain pens the number of pens that you see online the number of brands number of models that are there they've all gone through the roof so of course people are making pens because others are buying pens right that nobody is making a pen if it's not getting sold so usage is definitely increasing but it is still all said and done it's a niche hobby it's it's not a mainstream hobby it is not something which people uh, have very openly who uh, people use it all the time uh, in my own uh, if if i if i look at my environment and remove my uh, friends who are pen users out of it uh, in a year i might be seeing one or two extra or additional people who might be using fountain pens so it is not widespread right uh, yes with my family and Uh, people like that they know this is a craze with me uh, so they keep talking about it with me but if i'm looking at complete strangers i might see somebody you know using a lamy at uh, in an airport lounge or something like that or, or stuff like that it's it's very rare it's it's not very common but i do understand the usage is increasing so i i wish i could have shared some statistics but uh, unfortunately there's no published data that that's that's fine sir Uh, any specific uh, nib or uh, uh, ink a fountain pen which you suggest to a common man if a person wants to shift from a ballpoint pen or gel pen to a fountain pen what do you suggest so if people are prepared to uh, shell out about 300 rupees uh, my suggestion would be to go for the click aristocrat okay uh, it is uh, it is a very common pen it is available uh, with a lot of online sellers also and okay. uh, it is it's probably the simplest pen it comes with its own set of cartridges and a converter uh, if you want to buy ink uh, i don't know in south india you get this ink called brill b r i l we uh, have if you yeah. can yeah if you can get brill blue or brill black that is probably one of the safest inks it's so safe i've used it in uh, extremely expensive pens also like pelicans and and so on so brill blue is what you should get and my suggestion would be to avoid parker quink and avoid camlin blue because camlin the problem is the ink starts to fade after a little while it it starts with a little dark ink but it fades out uh, brill is very good brill is uh, 
probably one of the most amazing blue inks that I have used. I use it as a very regular uh, tester ink. If you want to graduate to the next level uh, and spend a little more, uh, please check out these two pen makers called ASA Pens, ASA or ASA. Uh, they are on Facebook. They, they have their own websites, asapens.in. Uh, also, Lotus yeah. Pens. Please, please check out Lotus Pens. They also have a brilliant uh, collection of pens. You, you can look that up. Uh, and thirdly, there is a Mumbai-based company called Airmail Pens. Now, Airmail Pens by themselves, I would not recommend. Uh, but there is a gentleman called Sanaya Shah. Uh, what he does is he takes these Airmail Pens and he puts his own nibs in it. They tend to be a little expensive, around 1,000 rupees or slightly more. But the way he tunes the pens, they are so nice to write with. It, it's a really incredible experience. So for starters, if, if my suggestion would be at least spend... 500 rupees to get a good pen and a good yeah. set of ink. And uh, that should be a, a very good uh, thing. Now, in this scenario, I don't know how good it is to recommend a Chinese pen, uh, but there are extremely inexpensive or cheap Chinese pens like Jinhao, like uh, Hero, Wing Sung. A lot of models are there. These pens, the thing I like about these pens is that they really write well out of the box. So you don't really have to fool around with them. Uh, so if you're comfortable, if if, uh, if your patriotism is not hurt by using a Chinese product, please feel free to go check these out also. Uh, my recommendation is extremely qualified. I, I know uh, sentiment against the Chinese is very strong. So I will put that as a very strong disclaimer. But don't fault the pens for the country they're coming from because these are actually good pens for the money that you spend on them. That's, That's my so answer. That's so brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. We are very happy. Most of the questions by our uh, viewers also are answered. And uh, a few things, you know, I think we definitely need a second part after a few days, a week, months. We'll uh, plan a part two. Thank you so much for the time. We have been approximately 85 minutes now. We thought of around one hour. Uh, your talk is so interesting and it went on just like that. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sudhir Kalyanikar, um, for being on our show right now. My pleasure. I hope I have been able to add some value and contribute. Yes. And not yes. it's not been a boring session. Uh, so no, not at all. Not all. If, there are, if, there, if at all there are a few questions unanswered, we will take it to you afterwards uh, through online please. Through WhatsApp. I'll uh, please, please. To them right across. Thank you so much, sir, once again. Have a great day. My pleasure. Thank you, Thank you for having me and have a good uh, rest of the Sunday. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. Bye-bye.